Hello guys, this is Schuleralt uh, bringing you my next uh, PLO video and today I'm going to do a hand review of uh, some of the hands that I've played pretty recently. Most of them are played at Zoom 500 but there are also a couple of hands from uh, different stakes from um, regular non-Zoom tables. So without further ado... Uh, the next hand that I want to discuss is um, from a 510 game. Uh, we are playing four-handed against uh, three very good regs and uh, I'm in a big blind with a pretty connected double suited hand so when Kermont opens on the button I decide to three bet it which is uh, I mean it's kinda standard I mean I can definitely call and maybe calling is even more standard but three betting is definitely fine and the flop comes down three four jack with three four clubs and um, we flop uh, all right. We flop a middle pair and a and a mediocre like low flush draw. So I have uh, I have some options here. Obviously I can uh, bet, but uh, getting raised uh, would be pretty bad because I actually think that we are quite a bit behind his uh, his raise get it in range on this flop and. Uh, Whenever we are up against higher clubs, we are in terrible shape. And if you notice, the jack of clubs isn't on the board, so uh, jack x of, that, of uh, clubs is going to be um, a big chunk of his uh, flop raise get it in range. So I actually think this uh, works uh, better as a check call. It's a pretty deceptive way to uh, play our hand. and. Uh, we can keep the pot relatively small, we can bluff on some cards, so like on, on an ace or something like that. So anyways, I, I decide to check and Kermont checks back. Now what do, what do I think of his check back range? Uh, he can obviously be just uh, giving up with complete air, uh, but uh, he steps some of his complete air hands. Uh, at the same time, like I think his uh, the majority of his checkback range on this flop is going to be some kind of uh, weak draw, like uh, a three with a weak gutter, like uh, a ace do three would be one of those hands that he could check back, like uh, or like a bear open ender, like a bear five six. Basically, it's uh, just those hands that he thinks are have some equity, but. Uh, uh, are not good enough to get in against my check raising range on this flop. So it's it's basically some hands with uh, with some kind of equity, but uh, not very strong. So the turn comes down seven uh, offsuit seven, and once again we have uh, two options. We can uh, bet. Uh, bet in this um, in this spot would be pretty much strictly for protection. Uh, so since we have a weak two pair, but um, I think like against his range, which consists of air and weak draws, uh, a check is uh, is preferable because we we have a flush draw, so we are not actually afraid of too many rivers. Like uh, and uh, as far as our range for three betting out of big blind goes, this seven is pretty pretty terrible for it. Like. Uh, uh, I'm not going to have a lot of 5-6 combos in my 3-betting range out of position, so uh, this card is a lot better for his range than it is for mine. Like, uh, on the 7 he's going to pick up a lot of equity with a lot of his hands, like uh, middling rundowns and stuff like that. So, I think our best play on this particular turn is to check call and then check call a lot of rivers, because I expect him to be betting this card very wide and then uh, barreling off on various rivers. So I check and uh, Kermon obliges, he bets, three quarter spot. And then uh, river is obviously great for me. I uh, uh, I fill up with my 4-7. And once again, do I lead out or do I check? And uh, I mean, I don't think it's even a discussion. I, I don't think we should be leading here with this hand pretty much ever because 
because our hand is very well disguised, he should not expect us to have any boats pretty, pretty much ever. At the same time, the only boat that he can have is 7-7. Uh, and I block, uh, I block a 7, so that's fairly unlikely. I mean, he can also have 3-4, uh, so, uh, but I beat that. 